The presidency on Tuesday said that they returned $311 billion, which was part of the money allegedly stolen by the late former head of state, General Sani Abacha, has been allocated for infrastructure development in the country. A statement issued by the senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity, Garba Shehu in Abuja, said the funds will be specifically address decades overdue infrastructure development, like the second Niger Bridge, the Lagos Badon on Abuja Kaduna Kano Expressways and the Mambila Power Project. The statement titled The Return of the Abacha Stole, Stolen Millions from the United States and Jersey noted that the money and the ones before it was a testament to the growing and deepening relationship between the government of Nigeria and the government of the United States. The presidency will, while also noting the part of the loot returned in 2019, was being used for grain grants and free school feeding programs, added that without the the current returned loot, the fight against COVID-19 would be even tougher. We have a public affairs analyst, uh, Leonard Ebute, to take a look at this. Good morning, Mr. Ebute. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me, Amaka. I'm sure you saw, you saw that news. You know, like so many Nigerians would say in a rather sarcastic manner that we're still receiving money from the grave. Well, how did you react when you saw yet another uh, money sent in? Well, recovering money, particularly at this time where the whole world is cash trapped, is good for us. I think we've been, we've been lucky. I thought that that money would have been lost because essentially um, there was little Nigeria could do except beg for the release of the money to us. Um, this one, this tranche of receipt is particularly interesting because the government is tying it to very specific projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, as compared to former ones where it was a case of it has come and then somehow it dissipates. The second Niger Bridge, the Mambila project, two road projects, major road projects, those are significant high value infrastructure projects. This money is also not small, it's about 130 billion Naira in Naira terms. What would have made sense for me, therefore? is to put side by side this kind of communication, the cost of those projects, to say uh, the second Niger Bridge is going to be 80 billion to mm -hmm. contribute to comp and all of that is going to come from this so that Nigerians can track to say the money actually came and delivered this bridge. Right. But when you spread it across four big projects that may have a total value exceeding what has come in, you, 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 you create a scenario where we begin to feel mm -hmm. that another dark hole has been created. Is it 130 billion or 311 mm -hmm. million dollars that is going to build the second Niger Bridge to the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the Kaduna Kano Road and the Mambila Project? Is mm -hmm. it enough? We need to have that level of visibility. Mm -hmm. I would rather we take projects that we can match to this value and actually deliver those projects so that Nigerians can know that this tranche of $311 million delivered this specific project. Right. I, I'm happy with um, tying it to specific project. Okay. That's what I have advocated all along. And I'm happy it's happening. OK. Now, having said that, you know, they went further a bit to say that um, had this money not come in, uh, tackling COVID-19 this time would, uh, would be tougher. So does that suggest, is there an undertone to say, well, even though we've listed these projects, uh, that this money will go into this, we're we are also expecting to take some chunk from these monies to handle COVID-19. What does that statement imply? Exactly? No, so the statement referenced the tranche that was received last year. Earlier. Earlier. And since COVID was already being tackled before this one came, um, from a pure comprehension point of view, I, I, I get the sense that they were saying if we hadn't received that amount last year, we would have had issues. Now, even if they were going to take from this one, you see, the entire world was not prepared for COVID-19. Right. Even big economies are struggling with where to find fundings for um, 25 million plus, 30 million plus unemployment in the United States. Big businesses are shutting down their shops and applying for bankruptcy. So that statement is not out of place, given the exigencies we are currently in. However, bringing it in side by side 
the commitment to use the money for infrastructure also throws a lot of unnecessary noise in the air. Is this going to chase down COVID or is it going to deliver the infrastructure projects that you mentioned? Again, when you create those smoke screens mm -hmm. around the meat of the argument, it appears to some of us that we are creating wiggle room for you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hear what you, the issues you're raising there in terms of transparency and accountability. In that same light, are you confident that, you know, all that has been received uh, would be put in the projects mentioned and there would be, you know, they would all be delivered at a set time? Because, you know, history, from history, we, we see that projects elapse and then they take over other things and then we begin to see so many white elephants. What's your thought around this particular one? I like to hope, but I'm also an analyst. You, you cannot analyze and on hope the basis. And hope is not a strategy. Uh, yeah, exactly. The history of this nation has shown that uh, uh, in terms of a uh, uh, project delivery, a typical Nigerian project is 15% of the value, the actual value of that project in comparative countries in the world. Mm. So a 100 billion naira project would be done for 15 billion naira in Togo. So we know this is the history of this country. This is also a country that is notorious for starting the most ambitious things, oftentimes ridiculous things. But it is not very common that the government of this country has been this specific. Yeah. And on one issue particularly that this government was specific was the Kanu Kaduna Rail. They were this specific, they delivered it. And so to come with this level of specificity if we ignore the smoke screen that Garbashi who threw along, it gives it gives it gives a, a, a little bit of perhaps they can do it. The, the, the thing is this: if the government wants to do it, the right. government can do it. Every single thing that has not been done in this country was not done deliberately. Right. It was not incompetence. It was just a lack of patriotism. At the beginning, there was no there was no determination to do it. They just put it there, you know, to create buzz, to get the people excited and all. And so I say to the guys in government, these projects you have mentioned, particularly the second Niger Bridge, right? Marry side by side are the two road projects. Mm -hmm. For power projects, there's a lot of integrated power projects happening now to increase the pool. But particularly those top three, they are so, so significant to the well-being of the Nigerian state that it would be such a, a sad tragedy if this is just another thing thrown out there for us to speculate and then it dies down eventually. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much for your thoughts there.